And the Oscar goes to... And the Oscar goes to... And the Oscar goes to Hugo. 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 While art is and always will be subjective, I think it's fair to say that Hugo is a beautiful movie. Or at least I think the film holds many beautiful moments. Those Oscars it won, all really technical categories. Hugo is technically a very wonderfully, very carefully considered experience, but it's a movie that unfortunately, like the many historic short films of George Millier as it portrays, feels somewhat forgotten. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's rare that a film is made with the intention of being a timeless classic. But I think there's a reason I haven't heard a soul talk about this movie since it came out almost a decade ago. In fact, the only discourse I've experienced where Hugo is a part of the discussion is when I've brought it into the conversation myself. I think why this film seems forgotten about is that it's inherently a children's movie. I'm not trying to stir the pot here, Hugo just is aimed for kids. It's silly, a bit goofy, and the visual gags are purely aimed to entertain people of a younger age. Oh! Hold it! Hold it! Move the back! Move the back! Oh! Oh! I don't want to sound like I think that this movie being made for a younger audience is a bad thing. I think it's great that Scorsese was able to stretch his wings with this film and dive into a story that many wouldn't expect him to tell. But I think the fact that Hugo isn't aimed at older audiences limits the spectrum of enjoyability that people will admit to having with this film. And because of this, it's become abundantly clear that Hugo isn't being remembered in the same way as Scorsese's other work. You talking to me? You talking to me? You talking to me? This all seems unfair though, particularly because I think Hugo is a shockingly beautiful movie. It's the kind of beauty that feels painterly emotionally grabbing and yearning to be remembered. Eventually I, I couldn't pay the actors or keep the business running and, and so my enchanted castle fell to ruin. Everything was lost. One night in bitter despair I, I burned all my old sets and costumes. Cinematographer Robert Richardson, renowned for lensing many films for both Martin Scorsese and Quentin Tarantino, brings a mature cinematic quality of light and colour to Hugo that doesn't really exist in many children's movies. In an interview with British Cinematographer UK, Richardson talks about building the visual identity of Hugo around the autochrome look, referencing one of the earliest forms of colouring film that involved using dyed potato starch. The result is an experience that looks and feels modern, but is calling back to an older, perhaps more exciting time in cinema. Richardson's use of light is also stunning, constantly filling the frame in a way that highlights the characters and complements the vivid set design. The camera is always either standing relatively still and letting the actors' performances really come through, or almost constantly gliding and tracking throughout the film. It establishes this sense of curiosity as we float beside or even above the characters, almost as if we are pushing them along, giving them purpose. With all this said, I think it would be a crime not to mention the film's beautiful music by Howard Shaw, who might sound familiar to you. Like Lord of the Rings, Shaw's music here really is the backbone of Hugo's world building. It really paints each scene with this absorbing, imaginative sense of what it could have been like to wander around Paris in the early 1900s. Scorsese and his team really are working so hard to keep Hugo in the realm of truly cinematic magic. 
And while your own opinion of this film is and always will be valid, I think, at least technically, the results really speak for themselves.